If you play a Final Fantasy of any sort, you've probably seen a being or someone like Bahamut or something like that, right? Because even though every Final Fantasy has their fair share of differences, they also have their fair share of similarities like reoccurring themes, different creatures or summons appear throughout different universes or throughout different games despite them not being connected. You know what I mean? And when it comes to the latest entry of Final Fantasy I'm going over in this video, Final Fantasy 16, they treat the summons in Final Fantasy 16 a little different than the other Final Fantasy games do. They kind of remind me of some Naruto type stuff, how each character or host to like ridiculously mythological beasts within them called icons. Beings that are host to these icons are called dominants. That's like a real big theme in this game. And that's how they treat Bahamut in this. Bahamut is inside a being known as a dominant. How strong is he? They're all comparable. Let's get it. You guys already know how everybody in this universe has their own little different perks like the Phoenix being able to heal, use fire, other beings using different elements like Shiva being able to produce or manipulate ice on a ridiculous scale because of the her beast that's inside of her. Jill, for example, has a beast like Shiva inside of her that can blast with ice. Similar to how Joshua can make a shield, Bahamut can also make a shield, or Dion, dominant of Bahamut, can make a shield to protect against Phoenix's attacks to show his might compared to other mythical beasts. But they did eventually break through when they worked together, though. They was the double team in Bahamut. Don't ask. Yeah, but that's still cool. Just like everybody in this game, he has his base form, then he has his super mode, where he actually turns into the big dragon-like creature like Bahamut and can do all kinds of light type of projective blasts and stuff like that. Honestly, at this point, who can't use a melee weapon? Of course, this being can use a melee weapon. This isn't necessarily Bahamut's doing, but just to get you a clear picture of how strong these beings are, these beings, just from collateral of their hits, can create gigantic town-sized craters like this, for example, right? Off-gate, they can level mountains. Bahamut should do that, too. It's one of the best summons. It was stated if beings like Titan, somebody that's ridiculously strong, too, if they was to fight, they would shake the island to its foundation, island shaking raw power output. You know he's comparable to other beings like Titan, for example, is that people talk about, oh, it would be nice to witness their clash, implying that they're comparable equal footing one could say even in his base form there's no doubt that he has superhuman attributes like you can see like the way he moves in particularly cutting down these beings with a melee weapon in his base form let you know he's just not no wiggling in his base state nobody normal human level can jump that freaking high just casually then smash with using his energy projection on top of his melee and then he does it again with a normal jump that high to show his physical attributes He's not afraid to use his physical superhuman attributes along with his light manipulation with Bahamut's power to make big shockwaves like that. It comes in handy favoring spear combat. A battle between two icons like Titan or Bahamut would threaten the entire kingdom if they both powered up to their greatest forms. To get an idea of his power is that he fought this other being that's the dominant of Odin. It was stated that their duo shook the skies. Like how does shaking the sky work? Battling with Odin is actually more impressive than you think because Odin is one of those characters in this game that has one of the most impressive feats in the entire game. It's a very flashy on-screen feat. Like the way they treat it in this game is like each kingdom has their own nuclear bombs and these beasts are like they act as the nuclear bombs of how we would threaten each other in real life, threaten other countries with nuclear bombs or nuclear war and or nuclear weaponry in real life. That's how they kind of treat it in this universe. Everybody has their own nuclear bomb to scare other countries from ever pulling up with their own power. Bahamut and Odin not only had a nice duel, but it shows that Bahamut has his own energy projective attacks, which I've already mentioned. You already just can see it, for example, here. What's even more impressive when Odin's in his powered up state and he does this sword slash Bahamut's attack or leg could actually catch his swipe without getting chopped up. Stopping a slash from Barnabas, or one could say dominant of Odin, it's kind of impressive when you remember what Odin did with a slice parting the oceans. This just gives you a scope on what these creatures can do. One could say they could probably blast or cut a city apart if Bahamut can stop slashing from this powerful being in a battle and their duel was pretty even. Even though it was a little short duel, it still shows that he's somewhere in that range with Odin. So one can say Bahamut's claws simply clashing with his sword will already prove his durability or even strength because he resisted the slash. Like Odin was in the middle of slashing this way, right? But his claws kind of stopped it on the spot and pr kind of proving that his strikes are up there with Odin's strikes. Which would mean if he powered up into his Bahamut state, he'd have the strength to resist attacks that are strong enough to split the seas with his physicals. I mean, we already know in the lore, they confirmed that their duel shook the skies or whatever that means. You already seen the stuff he can withstand with his claws and stuff and stop clashes from beings that can slice really hard. 
We've seen his blast do this. There was this like giant mountain sized crystal he can blast a hole in so they can enter, of course. Like the main villain of the game, though, I will admit it was too powerful for him to fight one on one. They had to team up. Bahamut wasn't strong enough one on one to blast him away. He actually lost his beam struggle. The way Bahamut's attacks were, he can lay waste to his city because he can blast with a whole bunch of different beams at the same time where they can hit in a lot of different areas at the same time leveling buildings and city blocks instantly basically yeah gatling gun style matter of fact bahamut has actually gotten w's on other beings like other icons like phoenix getting knocked out on this occasion it's hard to get near a being that can kind of spam energy blasts like this with the element of light bahamut's really durable can withstand attacks from other summons and keep on fighting after it even attacks from ifrit he gets hit point blank and can keep on fighting. Yeah, there was actually temporary power-ups where, you know, the Mother Crystals had a whole bunch of magic. If they would, like, eat a Mother Crystal or some crap, they would get powered up more than ever before. Bahamut actually did that. A Mother Crystal got amped up to where Joshua and Clive had to fuse. You know, the main character and his brother had to fuse in order to combat this amped up Bahamut. No telling how strong both of these characters was right here, but there's one statement that makes Bahamut look incredibly impressive what they stated about him. When he started charging up a mega attack, when Bahamut was charging up this attack, Clive mentioned he would burn the world, implying that this attack was that he was charging up was going to blow, burn the world or the surface of the world, maybe, or at least the continents. I would think this is an exaggeration if we haven't seen Bahamut in the history of Final Fantasy games being able to do similar stuff to moon shattering stuff. I would have thought that was an exaggeration, but it just seems like a common theme in Final Fantasy. When they say stuff like this, we've actually seen similar stuff like this in previous games, even though they're their own universes. But this isn't that far fetched, really. Not to mention, this was supposed to be the end all be all blast of all. Because if you think about it, if this blast really wasn't going to threaten the world, why did they not move out of the way of this blast? But instead, they tried to stop it, implying that it actually would have destroyed the planet if they would have actually dodged it. So it's stuff like this that makes me think it was actually true that it would have actually obliterated the Earth or they would just dodge the attack or attempt it to dodge the attack. After they overpowered Bahamut, yeah, Bahamut actually got overpowered, but... Look how big the explosion was. Like, you can't really tell, but it was a huge explosion. Do you think when he was amped up like this in that Bahamut state, did he have enough blast power or power in general to burn the world like they actually said? Was that really what was about to happen? Your opinions are more than welcome. I want to hear your thoughts on that. But y'all, do y'all respect Bahamut? Dion? You have to, really. Bahamut's pretty much overpowered in every Final Fantasy universe or game. They decide to put him in anyway, right? It's a reoccurring beast summon they use. It's just in this game, the summons are actually actually inside the beings' body. But I want to hear your thoughts. How strong is he compared to the other icons in your personal opinion? But before I get going, I got to give a quick thanks for the donations, everybody. Helps out a lot. Respect the Dion Bahamut. Let's get it. I'm glad you are enjoying your time on the channel. Make sure you check out the playlist on the channel to see other How Strong videos. If you like what this channel is offering, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys later.